the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well. On this day, Friday, the 14th day of May in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2021. Today we are on the ninth day. Ninth day in our 15 days, Novena, with and for widows. That means that uh, we've got six days to go. Oh, we are almost coming to an end of this 15 days, Novena. I thank God for the gift of you. So, we are talking about the specific needs that our gracious widows need to pray for uh, to know that um, um, God is perpetually with them. And I went through a few of them yesterday, and today I want to, to conclude that part so that we can pick on something different tomorrow um, on Saturday. So another specific reason for these gracious widows to pray for and as an intention that they need to always know is that to know that they are valued. Gracious widows, you are valued. That your husband is dead does not mean that your value diminished. And don't allow anybody to make you think of that, that your value diminished. Your value did not diminish. Actually, when I was having a girl's um, talk, we, the girl's rite of passage, I was taking them through what gives them value. And uh, I, I was very clear on the things that come from outside. Our relationships do not add, as add value in us, or maybe they, they, they do not make us more human beings. Well, of course, we always talk about the people that who are surrounding us, and always to know that which constitutes your value. And I want to point it out here, that your value is hinged on the fact that you are a daughter of the Most High God, and He values you just the way you are. Please don't listen to the few naysayers who may be so loud and who may have brought you down, please listen to what God says about you. I'll be able to share with you a number of Bible verses, I, maybe, I think, tomorrow, to be able to read and remind yourself and take God at his word because he says every day that you are my daughter and I will never leave you unattended. You are my daughter. The rest of us as family members may have ostracized you may have turned you into a victim. But that does not mean that your Father in heaven has done the same. So you are valued. And again, remember, there are, there are many, many others, men and women of goodwill, who still value you. Listen to those men and the women who value you. Don't listen to those who are constantly reminding you of how socially useless you are because in some societies you may be made to feel like that that because you do not have a man on your side then you are not as complete as the other women are and as i said the other day there is no woman who would, who would want to wake up and find her husband dead only the few cases that we have had where women have unfortunately worked so hard planned long, long hours to have their husbands executed. And it happened. And it's happening. It's very sad, very unfortunate, very evil, and very ungodly. Those are the few cases, maybe one in a million. But the rest of the, the, rest of the cases we have are women who love their husbands. And whatever happened, happened. And today, they are left alone. Please know, gracious ladies, that just the way things are, you are actually valued. The other point is that um, we, you pray for them that the gifts God has given these women can have eternal impact. Eternal impact. Dear gracious ladies, when your husband died, he did not go to the grave with your gifts. Some of you are very good singers. Some of you are gifted entrepreneurs. Some of you are gifted leaders. Remember, 
Every gift that God gives you, it is for his kingdom, building his kingdom. You may be down today because you are in tears and mourning. Being sad is not a sin. But please don't allow the death of your husband to take away the gift that God gave you. If you know that you are such a good entrepreneur, dust yourself, wake up, and go there and tell God, I know my husband would have wanted to see me succeed. Go there and work. Go there and work. Go there and succeed. Please go there and do that. Whatever gift that God has given you, maybe you are such a good leader. We have good leaders in our county and national governments who lost their husbands. Some are even governors in this country. So the gift of leadership did not, was not taken away by the death of her husband. Some are, others are senators. Others are members of parliament. Others are MCAs. Others are leaders in the corporate world. Dear gracious ladies, do not allow that gift to go to the grave with your husband. I am sure he meant well for you. God means well for you. Men and women of goodwill mean well for you. Please, don't cry forever. Wake up. Wipe your tears. And then say, I know my destiny is not to sit at the grave and cry for my husband. I know he is happy whatever he is that he is and he is at peace. So, this talent and this gift that God you have given me, I am going to utilize it for your greater glory. I want to encourage someone out there who may be stuck because of, of the pain of losing your husband. <clears throat> Some of your husband may have died in very difficult circumstances. Some of you may be struggling with the forgiveness of whoever killed your husband. I'm imagining the cases of uh, the cases of the one that we are following here in, in this country of men being executed by maybe some criminal gangs, and you will never know. I remember one case of a mother whose husband has been had been killed, and you know his body dismembered. Her son again killed, his body dismembered. Another son killed, and the body dismembered. And I remember one day, uh, one that gracious woman asked me, Father, why can't God show me who is killing my family? Why can't God show me? And he, uh, her pain would almost be tactile. I know there are many of you who are asking, why can't, no, can't I know who killed my husband? And why was he killed? Let me tell you some, something, gracious ladies. The question why is never answered by God. That is not good news. But God never answers the question why. The one that he answers is what next. So please do not sit on the Hawaii bench. The Hawaii bench has an adding tears. The Hawaii bench has an adding pain. The Hawaii bench has an adding condemnation. Get out of that bench. Sit on the next bench. The next bench is what next. And the what next. He is going to guide you. Remember, you are his daughter. You are his child. Refuse to remain in the group of people who want you to sit perpetually on the Hawaii bench. You will never move. Gracious ladies, you will never be happy. You will cry because you are seated on the wrong bench. Rise. Rise up. Go and see to the next. You are also moving. He will guide you. He will guide you. Gracious ladies, you will be guided. And I want you also to promise you my prayers. As your priest and servant, I will always pray for you. There are so many, many other men and women of God who, are, who have dedicated themselves to pray for you. So we are so many. At least for me, I can say for myself. I will pray for you for as long as God gives you and give me life in this world. For as long as I live, I will pray for you. But please, as I pray for you, 
get out of the Hawaii bench. We, you, our prayers will not help you. We will never help you on that bench. Our prayers will be effective on the next bench. Uh -huh. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Friday. Thank you.